What's happening, folks? I'm back with another reaction, back with some more punk rock, and we're going back to Propagandi's sophomore album, 1995, Less Talk, More Rock. I talked about it a few times recently, not just in Propagandi reactions, but in some other reactions, because uh, a few friends of the channel who initially gravitated to the comment sections on other deep dives, like synth pop or 80s related deep dives, um, have, you know, branched out and begun commenting on some other different musical avenues on the channel, which I vastly appreciate. Uh, and I was saying in one of those, um, in reply to a great friend and champion of the channel, Mark, would you not attack the Propagandi record? Um, that their first album, Less Talk, More Rock, or no, Less Talk, This Is Less Talk, More Rock, How to Clean Everything, uh, seen over here, um, that that is an album that since uh, they've moved on to other albums, Propagandi has maybe not disowned, but certainly, you know, I've heard Chris say in a couple different interviews, that look, that record is what it is, you know, I appreciate, you know, what we did in that time, but we're never going to make another record like that again. We're not going to make a record that sounds like that again. Uh, so the first record, in a, in a way, has been um, de-emphasized by the band. I still do think they play some songs from it um, at concerts. When I saw them in 2017, um, they played, I think, Anti-Manifesto, which is the first track on the record. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, they don't quite go back to that album um, as fondly as I think they hold this one, which is nearly as old. Again, this is uh, 95, so, um, you know, we're talking, what, like 28 years? Um, nevertheless, uh, as I said in other reactions, when I first got this, which was in CD format, I didn't get this vinyl copy until years later, uh, but when I got it on CD, um, you know, it took me a few weeks, a couple months to kind of, okay, this is, you know, I'm loving this just as much as the first one, just because the music was similar but not the same. It felt a bit more indie punk, a bit less just sort of, you know, vitriolic, um, politically scathing, but sometimes I've heard that first album described as skate punk. I don't see it as skate punk. I think that's slightly a mislabel. I think it's more like 90s hardcore kind of punk. Uh, but it is a different style than this. So as I said, when I first got this album, um, it took me a little bit to enjoy the music of it as much as the first album, which I definitely came to do eventually. Um, but, you know, lyrically, it was very much, you know, what I would have expected, but, you know, even more so. And in this album, there's a lot of, you know, liner notes about suggested readings and, you know, where some of these ideas came from. Whereas in the first album, there's some funny stuff in the liner notes and there's the great, you know, lyrics, which I think are still fantastic if you go look at the lyrics for a lot of the songs of the original, if a bit more abrasive and ind indicative of the teenagers, I think they were when they wrote a lot of those songs. Um, but yeah, ultimately there's a lot of extra information in this one. And on the final copy, the lyric sheet is actually put on the back, which is nice. Um, but yeah, we're going to listen to Resisting Tyrannical Government. Um, this is a tune that I enjoyed the moment I heard it, unlike some of the other ones, at least on the same level. Now again, I've come to love this whole album, but this is one of the handful of tunes, including the first track, admittedly. Uh, the first track is very fantastic as well, and, and it, you know, I was ready for that kind of tune. Um, but this track stuck out to me because there were a couple references which I already knew what they were, which is to say I grew up an ice hockey fan. I don't know why, you know, I was in Southern California, but um, by the time the Kings got a franchise, several years, um, you know, before I was born, um, my grandpa, I think, was like mildly interested in them, whatever. As a kid, I would get babysat by my grandparents. And I remember seeing a couple Kings games at when I was at my grandparents' house and thinking like, ah, that's cool, it's like physical and it's fast, but it's also like skillful and there's finesse players and whatever. So I got into ice hockey, I got into the LA Kings. Eventually, as many of you know, uh, the Kings got Wayne Gretzky, arguably still, you know, considered the best hockey player of all time. Um, and certainly the holder of most of the like major individual uh, records in the NHL um, record book. So I was obviously very excited. I had just become a Kings fan like a year or so before, uh, and I was you know, very into Gretzky. So eventually my parents got me, he wrote an autobiography in like the mid nineties. He was still playing and he wrote an autobiography. So I eventually got that. And I read about how the Flames, when uh, Gretzky was still in the Oilers, they had played the Flames in a playoff series and in an overtime game, Steve Smith, one of their defenders, and again, this same group of Oilers went on to win like four out of five Stanley Cups over the course um, of the 80s, of the like early to mid 80s. So they eventually had a lot of success, but before they won any of those Stanley Cups, they played the Flames in a playoff series, 
and Steve Smith was behind his own net, and he tried to play a pass out to like break out of their zone, and it hit Grant Fuhrer, their goalie's stick, and went back into the goal. Like an own goal if it was soccer, but they actually don't do own goals in hockey, so it would have been credited to whoever the last player on the flames to touch the puck was, which I don't remember in the moment. So this song, talking about resisting tyrannical government, talks about how he wants to resist these brutal forces, these forces which are cruel and marginalizing and um, exploitative and oppressive and so on, but he doesn't want to catalyze, as he puts it, the second final solution. He doesn't want to be the sort of rabble rouser or the, the muckraker that causes the government to hit down even harder and to oppress people more and to maybe lead to a lot of bad pain or even death on the part of people who, you know, he never intended to get hurt by resisting tyrannical government. And he's eventually saying, so how do I resist these systems, whether it's of, you know, systems of government or systems of like capitalism and so on, uh, without causing problems for people who are just trying to get by and so on. And here's the thing, he says, you know, I do make money, like I'm in a position where I do in some sense benefit from the system. You know, they're a band, they like play, they make money playing shows and they put out records which are bought by people and they, you know, they get royalties. Um, if their songs are used and things, not that propaganda like, you know, uses their songs in movies or TV shows. But the point is, the song acknowledges like, yes, we are actually privileged. We're in a position where we do sort of make sense uh, or make money off of this system. So how does someone like us do that in a way that is more ethical or fair? What's the, there's a line right at the end, which I think is so perfectly put. Uh, but that's exactly why privileged fucks like me uh, should feel obliged to whine and kick and scream until everyone has everything they need. Which is to say, like, yeah, I am sort of lucky, which is why I'm going to keep using my voice to try to help people and try to, you know, um, benefit everyone. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to try to not score an own goal and lead to, again, a second final solution where they like, oh, this, this rabble rouser is the exact excuse we need to come down harder on everybody and to you know, arrest uh, political dissidents and so on. So I think it's a very self-aware song. Again, at this point, I think they're early to mid-20s, um, you know, not much older than when they wrote their first record. But I think the songwriting on this album shows a definite big step <clears throat> up in terms of the the nuance of the songwriting. Um, and again, the sonics are a bit different from the first album, maybe not as different as I think the lyrics are, even though again, in another sense, um, they're driving at the same issues. They have a lot of the same attitudes um, and opinions on things. I just think the songwriting like takes a step up here and I think this is a good example of it. So I'll stop talking and we'll get to it. This is Propagandi uh, and the song is Resisting Tyrannical Government on Less Talk More Rock. I was just going to look to see if the cat number is here. Oh, and once again, let's give a big shout out um, to the, the logo, which they've continued to use ever since um, they first introduced this on this album. Um, so yeah, is resisting the the print on this li label is so stupidly small. Um, I believe it's the first one on side two, which should be this side. Um, so I'll know right away if this is the right track, because um, if not, it'll be the first track on the album. Uh, but yeah, resisting tyrannical government by Propagandi, maybe. Nope. So again. It should be written the other way around, but whatever. This is Propagandi Resisting Tyrannical Government from Less Talk, More Rock, 1995. I heard this, I was like, oh my gosh, I know the story. Jesus 
So play the man, not the puck. Look at the center of the chest, not the puck. fantastic i really do love that sentiment and again i love the self-aware you know that look we're, we yes we make money from this system but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't and that we aren't biting the hand that feeds because you know it needs to be done and indeed like the name of the song is just resisting tyrannical government but in the track listing on the back here there's a parenthetical it's a dirty job but someone's got to do it um, so yeah, once again, uh, I love what this album represents. I think it's, you know, it was a big step in their history. Now, the next album was an even bigger step, but because by the time they got to the next album, which is, um, Today's Empire's Tomorrow's Ashes, 2001, um, Todd uh, had joined the group after the original bassist, John K. Sampson, left, um, for reasons I've discussed in other videos, part of it, you know, their shows were getting very intense because they're a very passionate group, and then... You know, people with very different political views were showing up to like trash the shows and or crash the shows, and ultimately there was a lot of you know like physical incidents. Uh, so John K. Sampson left to do the Weaker Thans. Todd came in. At that point, they became a more like hardcore band, like right on the edge of metal. It's still punk rock, but um, they added a sort of more metal sound to their. Um, musical style. So um, yeah, I guess all the the albums have been sort of transitional and pivotal, um, which is you know a good indication of a band that continues to grow. Um, but ultimately, I do enjoy this album a lot, uh, and more so now in retrospect than perhaps when I first got it. Uh, and yeah, like I said, um, I had read that Gretzky autobiography, and he talks about that playoff series and how they all felt bad for Steve Smith because, you know, he didn't mean to do it, and, you know, ultimately, um, they went on to win a number of Stanley Cups, um, after that. Um, so that when I first heard this song, I was like, oh my god, and by that point, I was playing ice hockey, and I was, you know, I was a forward, I was definitely, like, I was a center, usually, occasionally, I was playing on one of the wings, but I usually played center. So I was like an attacking player, sort of a finesse player, but I don't know, maybe like a Jeremy Roenick because I did like the body check too. Um, but the point is, um, they're absolutely right. You know, like if you're defending, you can get caught up in someone's wizardry if you're staring at their stick work and, you know, their stick handling. Uh, but ultimately, they have to get by you to do anything. So if you just, you know, again, keep a bead on the middle of their chest and if they try to go by, no, like you're not going by. Um, that really is the best way to defend. Um, so yeah, when I first heard this song, it, like my eyes lit up and I was like, oh my God, like I know the hockey series they're talking about or the playoff series they're talking about. Uh, and I know enough about ice hockey now. Again, the reason I discovered Propagandi, I went up to a hockey camp in Canada and a kid there had their first album on cassette tape and I ended up hearing it. So um, yeah, I knew enough about hockey at that point to know that, like, and that's legit strategy. That's, you know, that's legit hockey strategy. So, uh, again, these punk rock videos are always long, especially when I talk propaganda, and they always will be so. But apparently, um, you know, Captain Elaborate is not, um, disfavored for that reason. So shout out to Ryan, uh, as well as all the other punk rock people. I do appreciate you. Let me know what you think of this. I'll see you next time. Peace.